Sonic Talk. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sonic Talk, episode uh, 674, recorded today, live Wednesday, the 23rd of June, just after the solstice. We've past the longest day and uh, we're into all of that business so uh, welcome everybody this is the podcast to do with music technology streaming music uh, studio synthesizers plugins everything to do with music production music distribution all kinds of stuff that we've got and uh, a few little oh, excuse me i do i do apologize um <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our YouTube uh, chatters. Nice to see you all and our IRC chatters and also on Discord. I'm not streaming to Discord this week. It was kind of, I think that's what's slowing my machine down and we only actually had one person listening. So I'm sorry if it was you, but it's not worth slowing down my machine. I figured that was more important. Also, um, you can see or you can hear us on um most good podcast outlets. Uh, we're available on Alexa, Spotify, Stitcher, Google, iTunes, all of that stuff in audio. And if you feel like you want to support us, we have a Patreon. Uh, the details are up there. Starting at two bucks, you get all our videos ad-free, unless they've been uploaded demonetized to YouTube. So you get special ad-free versions. You get in special content. You get uh, exclusive stuff there. So uh, all very reasonably priced for probably a, a fancy cup of coffee a, coffee. a cup of coffee a month is how I generally put it. Or maybe a, a strong beer. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much uh, for a, the bearing with me while we do all of our, uh, um, our stuff, uh, the, the housekeeping. Um, let's say hello to our guests and we'll start over here with Mr. Charles Chicky Reeves, who's over there in his studio in London in front of his uh, oh, large car. Is that switched on, Charles? Because I have a feeling you'd be sweating profusely if it it's, was. It's your Valve console, Even right? though it's only, uh, was it about 16 degrees or in the old money, uh, 61 degrees Fahrenheit, I think, uh, this would still heat up the room too much. But as I was mentioning just before the show, my little video switcher will do the job just fine. So <laughs> between the, <laughs> these and the UAD interfaces, you know, everything. You could get enough heat enough. into the system. So uh, it's been yes. a while since we've seen you, Chicky, actually. Last time I saw you, we were at Real World, uh, and we had a spot of supper. You've been uh, doing production rehearsals with um, Mr. Howard Jones, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It was lovely to see. That was what that was in May. I think it was. We were, ah, we were out there for ago. almost, we were there for almost all of May. Um, yeah. So we we're doing production rehearsals, getting ready for uh, potentially some shows. <laughs> we'll see who knows what's going to happen with regards to that. Um, but uh, You're ready. yeah, so we're doing, yeah, uh, we're ready. We're absolutely ready. I, well, the, I had to program the whole show on a, on a new console. We have this, traveling uh alan and heath is it c1500 i can't remember the model number but it's a it's great 128 channels and has all kinds of great plugins and stuff built into it um so yeah we i was pro reprogramming the show on that and and uh we made a i saw it yeah I mean, it's really it's really impressive this is it isn't it uh no that's not it uh, this is it <laughs> really impressive that's the one yes tiny one. little thing Brilliant, and, and you were telling me all about some of the. There's some really nifty design things, like all this, all the DSP and stuff lives on the stage. It's just the. That's so right. if the, if the yeah. console goes down, you end up, you know, the show goes on, and there's just some brilliant, brilliant bits of. Uh, if the console were to were to go down, I could run run to the stage with my laptop, and and load up the the same console app on the laptop and just do the show from there if I needed to. And I and I have the whole show stored, you know, as scenes and everything. So it'd be very it'd be very easy just even though I'm not in front of the PA, I'd be able to still mix it, you know, and, and it it probably be probably be fine. I, I made a recording of, of the all the rehearsals we did and and I really got it dialed in. So it's it'll be a very nice hi fi sounding show when when we do these shows whenever that is. So, Excellent. Um, but yes, that that was the last time I saw you. It's been and since then I've because I also teach a mixing class at London Metropolitan University, so I've been grading projects. And how do you? Do, uh, how do you? Is that live mixing class? How do you? How do you grade live mixing? Yeah, originally it was live mix, live mixing, and then it uh, it morphed into live streaming mixing. Ah, okay. So, um, and then I, I teach. I also teach composition and so forth because I'm also a songwriter. Um, so, uh, but I've, I've been basically grading for about two and a half weeks now. I've been grading projects <laughs> it's just wow. like, and, you know, and like writing extensive feedback summaries and so forth and, and, uh, brushing up on my, uh, 
my writing skills. My yeah. writing as in uh, as in on a typewriter or on a computer writing. And that's the part of that's the part of teaching where you think, ah, it was this this the first bit was great. Now this bit's really yeah. tough and hard work, I'd imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why did I choose to do this? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm actually I don't normally do it all this all this time, but I am covering for someone who who left that program. And uh, and and so I'm I'm filling in for her, and we'll we'll see what's happening next year. But I'm ready for ready for summer now. I'm ready for right. summer. So and Excellent. I'm able to be here finally. Excellent. Well, glad to hear it. And uh, of course, we also have Mr. Rich Hilton, who's there in Connecticut, where the birds are tweeting. I don't know if that's your birds or whether that's Chicky's birds. I have no idea. I guess it's earlier in the day, so they're probably still waking up. How are you, Rich? Rich, of course. I'm well. Chic player with chic an engineer and producer in his own right also um and I, I, sometimes I, I you were doing some education stuff weren't you on, online and doing some remote things Have you still been doing any of that or uh, uh not lately i haven't been teaching lately i do have a background in teaching and prior to my work with nile rogers i was teaching at a small college but not lately lately it's just been mostly work and uh family stuff well, that's all right. That's exactly yeah. how it can be, too. Lovely to have you also, Rich. Um, and, of course, before we go anywhere else, I have to plug our uh, um, our album, which was out last Friday, um, Sonic 001, the rather imaginatively titled compilation, Contributors Volume 1. 18 tracks they are there and uh it was you can buy it now on bandcamp and if you just go to sonic state there's ads and you know you can just there are links that you can find it and it's been going great honestly this has been some there's been just such great stuff the one thing that i found every time i listen to it and everybody's piece is great i just think i feel i've got mix inadequacy i really you know because the, just the, the stereo imaging i've realized that i'm really not up on that and i should have spent a bit more time on my track which i'm happy with the composition but the mix is just lacking so i'm hoping that one of these days i'm going to be able to get some tips from you pros how to get how do you get stereo bass because most of my track is bass and i it just sounds really like this and it's kind of a bit dull but uh, I guess oh, well, there's a very easy trick I can tell you right now. Okay. You can, you can, uh, well, the idea is you want the low frequency of the bass to actually be in the middle because you have the most power that way. Yeah. But you can do something simple like, um, like, uh, one of the, the sound toys, uh, what is it called? The micro pitch thing, something yeah. like that. And just have it focus only on, on everything above say 300, 400 Hertz. And then you can get it really nice and wide, but you still have the power of the low end. That's that's what I, I do that live because all all uh, Howard stuff is it's all stereo bass, but I take all the low frequencies and I just get them very very monophonic and everything else. I make nice and wide stereo. So that's mm, how you do. It. That sounds like a good one. Sound micro shift. Again. Micro shift. Yeah. Okay. Micro shift. Oh. Yeah. That, that's it. That's yeah. the one. Um, that's yeah, that's good. And also using some kind of, I mean, there's very rarely that I want to put the bass in stereo, but when I do, or if I do, I'd be interested in one of those newer uh, MS processing devices that ah. allows me to do exactly what Chicky said, which is keep the bottom end solid and down the middle and expand mid-range and up frequencies to give it a little more breadth. So uh, mm. that would be another way. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, well, my, yeah, my my source is mono to begin with, so I have to make it yeah. stereo somehow. So yeah, okay. Those I might two try ways that. would both do that. Okay, I might try mm -hmm. that. I think there's a deal on. Uh, oh, I'm not sure if there's a deal on sound toys, but I'll I'll put that on my list. Thank you very much for that. Oh, um, yeah. Anyway, that's enough about my mixing ad inadequacies. <laughs> but do please do do check out the uh, the album. Is there is there is some really really good. Well, it's all really good. Some of it is exceptional, uh, and uh, and it's just hugely varied. And uh, yeah. Well, worth. and featuring a track from Mr. Rich Hilton, in fact. Rich Hilton, yeah, Rich Hilton on the uh, and from get Mr. Pole position, as well. and uh, Chicky. Yeah, Reeves I did. And Much many, to my amazement. Yeah, many, yeah. many of us on there, and I've got a little one there. But like I say, listen to everybody else's first, because then you won't be so well. <laughs> Actually, no, listen to mine first, because then you won't be so disappointed after you've listened to everybody. Else. <laughs> you sound great. <laughs> on this thing. You sound great oh, on it, and it comes mixing up, wise. I'm talking about you know. It I'm comes hungry. up perfectly between 
my piece and whatever follows yours, which I don't recall. At Chicky. The off the top That's Chicky's. Oh, yep. Chicky's bowed well, me. <laughs> yeah. It provides a great bridge between those two things. It works perfectly. It's great. Excellent. Yeah. I'm so glad I wasn't involved in having to sequence the album because I know, particularly with 18 tracks. But um, yes, we've got just, just a, another aside. We've got people, uh, we've been doing interviews with lots of people, so talking about, you know, stuff around the album and how they made things. So there's more of those coming up. I think I did the first one with Gaz and there's some more on the way. So do stay tuned for that um okay what have we got we got some topics we got things other things to talk about i was thinking there would be no news but there actually is a bit of news and let's start with this guy because this is a biggie this is the spitfire albion solstice which is a very much uh a kind of collection of interesting and ethnic instruments sort of well quite uk folk specific but also just interesting ways of recording fiddles, violins, and it's in the Albion thing. One thing that's very interesting about this, it's in Contact rather than their new player. Anyway, I won't play it because there's it's an, both the videos were like an hour long. There's a walkthrough with Christian Henson and Home, uh, and there's also one with... Um, ah, no, I knew I'd forget it. The other guy, who I can't remember his name now, and that <laughs> makes me feel really ashamed. But really big deal. I, in fact, I spoke to Ty, because Ty was going to be on the show, and he couldn't make it last minute. And he's been raving about this. He says it's absolutely awesome. Um, Rich, I know that Spitfire are, you know, they, they, they have been for a while, been the, the kind of go-to for very specific voices in, in orchestral work. And, you know, that it's the sound that, you know, you can't necessarily find anywhere else. Have you, uh, have you had a chance to listen to any of this? I watched an entire hour's video on this thing yesterday. <laughs> uh, I watch a lot of their videos and I do love their software. And as relates to Ty Unwin, let me say, he is a master of controlling these things. He has got some awesome hardware devices he's configured to be able to do real-time control of these libraries that is just jaw-dropping um this looks like a fantastic instrument it's interesting to me from a product perspective that now what it's down to is what your oscillators are in this case they're samples but the point is the sound sources have suddenly taken on this tremendous significance not that they didn't have one before but most people were talking about how you filter them and process them over time and do things to waveforms that we all know and love um this is very specifically oriented around uh unique custom sample sets of mm. instruments that are not widely known or found quite often or things that we all you know lust after that probably don't have one in the closet like a hurdy-gurdy and uh yeah. it it's just the sounds i heard were fantastic the control aspects as with all spitfire stuff are really really well mapped and easy to access and expressive and uh I was quite blown away by this thing. Yeah, it seems like, like Ty said, he wrote a really long rambling letter to Christian saying, you know, or email saying, this is great. And he really is. He was telling me about it when he rang to say he couldn't make it. Uh, it's it's interesting that they've gone with contact. They stuck with contact. I suspect, Chicky, it must be to do with the fact that uh, there's all of that special scripting that, that Albion, because Albion is quite a long, uh, a long living sort of sub brand of Spitfire, isn't it? And, and I guess there must be yeah. a whole bunch of stuff in there that they want. They want to keep, you know, because people who buy Albion probably are using contact and maybe don't want to move up. But that's an interesting thing. But yeah, their stuff is astonishing. Yeah, so many, yeah, so many of their sample libraries are, or mm -hmm. so many sample libraries in general are contact based. You know, it's funny. I watched, I watched that video, uh, the walkthrough video, and I realized that there was still some of my money that Spitfire didn't have already. So I decided <laughs> to rectify that situation. Bye. Right, so you, you, you went for it as well. <laughs> I have it. Yeah, I have it. Um, I got it, have it downloaded as of this morning, and I've, I've had a little bit of a play with it. And, well, gosh, it's it, – my my only concern is about any of their stuff, which I, I love everything they make. I have – I think I now have almost everything of theirs, I mean, it, except for all the lab stuff, but I mean, wow. all their purchasable stuff. And the – their stuff is it has such a peculiar good peculiar sound and i and there are sometimes i i, I hear things like um game because i would do game soundtracks some sometimes and 
and I and I go, I'm pretty sure that's Spitfire. You know, like I, I recognize the signature, the sonic signature. Yeah, well, that, but, that, that's but interesting. it I mean, sounds so beautiful. That's interesting because you know, these are premium product. I mean, this one is Intro 299. This is back to their, because they've been doing a lot of very affordable stuff. And this is back to their sort of primo, uh, you're going to buy it if you need it kind of thing or but in some ways you know what's really interesting about this it, it's a premium thing so not everybody's going to afford it but lots right. of people who do this kind of work will do so there'll be it, it, it's it's hard to retain um that individuality well i'm sure it's not because it's about the composition but i mean do you see what i'm saying it's like if everybody buy it goes oh, i've got to have that all the media composers in the world buy <laughs> buy the next spitfire release and use it on the next queue for instance you know yeah. then, then it becomes <laughs> a thing doesn't it it's an interesting kind i've of, already uh, thought about how i'm going to use it in the next I'm working on a song now, and I was thinking, oh, okay, this would be perfect for that. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, if you have any of the Albion stuff, they give you uh, a further discount. So I, I think it's 35% or something. It's something, it's pretty massive. Oh, okay. Um, I can't remember how much of my, I think I think I paid two nineteen. Okay, you know, I, so yeah, that's, I, I mean. I don't remember. Something like that. Yeah, so the they, they give you quite a discount. I mean, there's obviously the early introductory discount, but also if you have other Albion stuff and I have, you know, the other Albion stuff. So, um, they, but yeah, it's, I, 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 I'm in the middle of working on a song right now. And then I watched that walkthrough and I, I was thinking of, you know, several different elements of that, that I can add into this song, which, is not even remotely Celtic, not even <laughs> re remotely folkish or anything. Um, and yeah, just needs it, I could yeah. add this and it just, it adds this, you know what, it's, there's a certain panache to, to the stuff that they do. And I think that's, that's what, that is the magic of it. It's just everything, you know, every time I put anything that they make onto tracks that I've done, it makes the tracks that I've done sound like, like they were, done for a million dollars i mean they just everything just sounds so much better it's it's really i get nervous relying on something that much but God, it's interesting it's, so, it's like yeah they so say good. you know if you're in business you should never reply on it you never you should always have more than one client just in case something goes wrong you know so so you can <laughs> spread the risk <laughs> so, so spitfire something, something, something happens that all, all of spitfire's digital stuff just evaporates in some kind of weird sort of digital sort of viral attack and all With their the samples turn to dust yeah corona expulsion or whatever it is and suddenly it's all wiped out <laughs> yeah, yeah every night when i go to sleep back I, to I pray for a chip tunes it'll just be chip tunes everywhere yeah, <laughs> yeah. well yeah, funny you should mention chip tunes ah, wow, they're westworld thing i won't go into that though <laughs> no interesting um yeah so uh, i think i posted the link in the show notes uh modern cinematic folk noir um and yes you get that it's a it's a contact thing so i'm, I'm not sure do you have to have you need contact you need the full contact version oh no contact yeah, player included. Ah, okay contact player included. So oh i, I thought know. you needed the full one I'm not sure. It's a bit unclear, I but uh, I, I'm not sure. Anyway, um, mm. yes, th that's a big release. And uh, Christian said he's been working on it for a really long time, and it's kind of a big deal. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, one of the things about looking at all of the videos they do at Christian's place is, depending on which angle the shot is, the first shot was uh, where it's over his desk, and then behind him he's got the massive... Uh, um, Colossus, which is really distracting, which is the yeah. uh, Analog Solutions Colossus. And then the other one is just this sort of amazingly lit control room studio kind of thing, which is must be must be having a ball up there. Um, I'm going to just quickly uh, have a word from our friends over at uh, Modal Electronics. Because the Cobalt 8, as we know, uh, just came up with a, a, a firmware update, which we covered last week. Uh, eight voice extended virtual analog synth, innovative oscillator with 34 algorithms, morphable four pole ladder filter, 29 lenders encoders for real time control, MPE support, does that very nicely actually, and modal app for Mac, Windows, iOS, Android, and VST3. AU. Uh, if you want to check that out, use the URL bit.ly slash underscore get bit.ly slash get underscore modal. God, I, why can I never say that right? Anyway, we thank them for their support and uh, do worth, well worth checking out. Um, let me see what else was there. Um, let's um, let's look at the uh, yes. This was another thing. This is kind of interesting. So this is a new go mix kind of from Roland. Audio gear. 
Go Mixer Pro X gives you an easy way to always sound your best. A whopping 11 channels of inputs. Here's how to connect it to your smartphone. A couple of mic preamps, USB out. USB cables are included for iOS and Android devices. Plus, there's a four-pole TRRS cable included so you can get high-quality audio to virtually any device. Interesting. This is, I mean, because this is the third iteration of the Roland Go Mix. Uh, I know it's maybe not so off, uh, the, the, the first thing that one might reach for, but actually, I'm kind of thinking 11 channels. I think it's 150 bucks, it looks like. That seems like if you're going to hook it up with your phone, now we can do so much more. We've got such great cameras in our phones. This is starting to kind of, we can see it all kind of coming together in a way that uh, that could be quite exciting. Uh, Rich, do you, uh, do, you, you use, uh, do you use an Apogee Duet, don't you, for your kind of portable stuff, if I remember correctly? Correctly, is that right? Uh, there was a day. There um, was a day. No more. It. There <laughs> was a day that I used Apogee Duet. Um, uh, there was a few years that I used an Apogee, du an original Firewire Apogee Duet. Wow. I'll they have a brand new one. And by the way, since we're on the topic, they have new M1 compatible software beta that they're uh, offering up for their devices. I have an Apogee One now, a blackface Apogee One that I use in a pinch on the road. Um, but this is a brilliant device, and I hadn't seen the previous ones, so it was all new to me when I was watching the uh, show prep. And for $150, to make it that easy to get a whole range of uh, sources into your computer at the same time and be able to control their levels at least, is uh, that's pretty darn cool, if you ask me. I think yeah, it's, very, I, I, it's small and it's portable and you can carry it. It's light, doesn't take up a lot of room in the bag. It's, uh, it's beautiful. Yeah, for that kind of cat. Well, I, I usually thinking... don't like things. I usually don't like things with a lot of ins and outs around it, like where the thing gets completely bogged down with the I/O physically, and right. other people put breakout cables and they trip have hazard pros yeah. as well. Um, Multiple direction trip and, hazard. <laughs> Arturia has it in their uh, interface, and it and it kind of looks horrible to me. But this thing actually looks really cool because the portability is the ultimate thing, and you don't have to carry anything else. You just you put this thing up, and it's gone, and you're in. So yeah. uh, I was very impressed. I can't. I, I think it. I can't tell whether it requires a battery or. An ex I'm just trying to figure it's that battery. out because it's a battery. Ah, yeah. okay, that makes a lot of sense because the the first one I think was passive, which was a little bit tricky. So it was quite hard to get a decent uh, a decent level out because we I we see. we um, we were we were quite excited by this of the thought of doing show uh, trade show stuff where we could just bring all this stuff mm. in and somebody could be there with a phone essentially and have like a couple of mics and a line mix and just record show video and it's really quick and it just goes straight to the camera you know and, and it may well be possible with uh, some of the camera apps if it shows up as a class compliant device you know having that level of mix only problem is is you know you really really do need a limiter and you really really do need a high pass filter when you're working certainly in, in a show environment oh uh, Charles it's, but it does look kind of it's the sort of thing that you would maybe have in the bag that you're know, just just in yeah. case yeah absolutely uh, it, it, especially for live streaming stuff even if i'm mixing on a console and i just run stereo into it and you know use it as a way to to get into the phone and just use the phone camera i think it's a it's a really quick and dirty sort of i mean dirty in a good way uh uh live streaming tool so it's it's, it's really cool um, the nomenclature is a little weird yeah at the pro x what will be the next one the pro x gt and you know x y one <laughs> Or zero zero, you know, like, I, I don't like. Yeah, it, I don't. Know. I don't like most things that say pro on them because <laughs> usually they're not. But um, but yeah, I like I like this, and it runs on I think two double A's or just maybe it's four. Uh, yeah, yeah it, four but, four triple A's actually. Rechargeable oh, okay, triple A's, okay. or or uh, rechargeable. I oh, know it's uh, no. no, that doesn't really make sense. The power, oh, so power supply can be the be alkaline or rechargeables. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, approximately so, four I mean, hours on an alkaline battery yeah mm. okay this i think this would be great i mean i would be i'd be willing to you know use this as, for for streaming stuff certainly i don't know if i, I wouldn't really require I, I mean they play a whole band into it oh which that reminds me what was that thing that we we reviewed it or talked about it on a show a long time ago that was looked like a like one of the face huggers from alien was it the uh, zoom <laughs> 
I think was it, yeah, was it, H8 yeah, I think or something. Uh, yeah, Gaz like has one of those. Every yeah. direction, it was crazy looking, really insane looking. <laughs> I th think Gaz uh, has one of those actually, and he was waiting for the mod because it's it's the similar sort of thing, but it's a bit more chunky. But it's all XLR. I think they got combi jacks on everything. I'm not sure, but it's it's across eight or six facets, yeah. so it just kind of <laughs> sprays. Yeah. That's Supposedly a real cheap hazard. It's just the it's just really the the ergonomics of it is very strange, you know, because it's it's not just stuff coming off the sides; it's like coming off the sides in different directions. <laughs> so, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But this actually, they made this work. This this Roland one, they made they made it work. It looks well. It looks it's, like it looks I say, it's good. The, the third iteration, so they they must have got it right by now because it, it it took a little a little go. The only thing I would have liked mm -hmm. to see, which uh, I don't think I can uh, can I make that, is some sort of way of rather than putting the phone in it, it'd be nice to see some sort of um, screw mount on the top so you could put it under a camera and the camera would oh, yeah. sit do you see what i mean so they could use it as a mixer and have the little exit go out into dslr i mean i'm sure someone will come up with with something that allows you to do that and what i actually well, use something that holds it onto a camera a yeah. camera um tripod or something camera mount. that would make a lot of sense what i actually didn't do now i've bought uh you could buy them on amazon these tiny little uh usb microphones so it's usb c on one yeah. end it's like a lav mic with a usb c connection you just plug it in and i carry it with me if i'm going anywhere i, I brought it over to see you just in case there was a like suddenly an interview opportunity turned up because i could basically hold the camera get really pretty good quality and then have a mic that was close enough and would give you and i've, I've used that a few times in fact i used it um I think at Abbey Road, where uh, you know, just plugged it into. Uh, I think it was something similar into a GoPro, and it just went straight in. And I did all the interviews there because I just had a tiny little camera and a mic, and you can kind of make it work. And it's you know, oh, it's, that's pretty really cool. It's very very small. I can't I'm see mm -hmm. if I can find it anywhere. But that's the sort of stuff. You just plugged it straight into a Go GoPro with the USB C. Uh, yeah, that's Excuse that's me. really that's very I, uh, right now. I'm that's how we're how you're seeing me is my a GoPro my other nice cameras are in different angles but but yeah the gopro i i use it all the time for for that kind of stuff but i always have like you know i'm separately recording the audio and then i try to seek it up later <laughs> so but that's it's good to know about that microphone yeah i'm just seeing if i can find it. it's just really basic i mean you know it's like i think it's like 26 quid or something you know or less and it just comes in a little pouch one of these you know one of these kind of things really really easy and you mm. can just plug it into your smartphone you get I, I think the ones with lightning connectors are probably a bit more finickety because obviously that's a licensed thing but hey you know, yeah. what it's my sync tone excellent yeah. well i i have the hand <laughs> exactly. clap the hand clap you can't beat the hand clap particularly when i'm doing you know this what? kind of stuff i just clap. same thing well, yeah just do yeah. the hand clap oh, there <laughs> it is. uh but yeah um anyway uh, okay that's the road go mix um yeah it seems uh, i think they're gonna send us one so i'll check it out and see what it's what it's like and how good it is or if it is good indeed or not um let me see well uh, maybe we should do the uh, may, I, big... may i have a short rant for a minute on the oh, subject please of do. syncing audio and video yeah yeah uh because we're home all the time uh my lovely wife and i often watch different kinds of television shows and i'm often like privy to some of the things she's watching and this was one series uh i don't recall it's it's probably either a police drama or some medical drama neither of which i particularly care for on which the dialogue replacement is abominable and i when i say abominable <laughs> i mean it ain't even close and it doesn't look like they care and yeah. that's incredible to me. After all the hours I've spent <laughs> trying to get things <laughs> synced up properly, um, that that they'll let broadcast and it's high quality. When I say high quality, the production quality in general is of a high standard. Is it as yeah. high as the BBC? Probably not, but it's damned high. And um, it it's just jarring to me and i'm sure it's not jarring to my wife is it consistent is think it consistent but i'm i'm i think no it's an, not consistently uh, out of sync by x it's the the lines don't match it's almost like they sent these clips to the artists themselves and they just got, took what they got have they not ever seen vocaline yeah or, i don't you know, get it ADR i mean stuff. why 
why in this day and age you should have it looking like that is beyond me. So there's my rant of the day. Um, That's a fair enough. Because I wonder sometimes, depending on what you're watching, whether you're watching on satellite or cable, I think there are these variable issues with codecs and maybe maybe there's something wrong with the original master where it's a, a slightly off frame rate and things just go really wonky because there's a there, that's I'm st there's a new news channel in the UK which is is it's it, it's compelling watching it's not my my particular slight uh, bent on news I'm not very you know interested in their political uh, angle but it's a new used news station and it's uh, it's called GB News and it's literally it's like how not to, to make live television <laughs> And every single remote caller, the audio is out of sync or there's a sync problem when they're in the studio, they they don't get the, the everything's kind of wrong. You know, it's just like a, yeah. a, a, it, there, there's a, a, a farcical play in the uh, in the UK, I think the play that goes wrong and it's just a, a play about people who are putting on a play and they're really bad and it just keeps going wronger and wronger and wronger and it's kind of like that and it's really compelling yeah. and it, I, I put a joke up about on facebook it's like i'm guessing putting sound engineer for the for gb news would probably not be a good idea on your cv i saw you wrote that i wondered about it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, it's, funny. but but what it's really interesting because normally this stuff is just completely you know nobody gives a crap about this stuff until it's wrong and then when it's wrong it's like everybody's like why is it so wrong and it's like well it's not it's not as easy as it looks guys you know that you do need to have some level of skill and um quality control to to do this kind of thing right <laughs> well in our last election it. cycle i'm sorry chicky uh, no, no, in our no, last election saying, cycle sorry go, <laughs> sorry. go please. hold on go. <laughs> <laughs> Go rich. In our in our last election cycle, uh, quite a few candidates were doing their outreach via some form yeah, yeah. of online communication, as would be the case because you can't gather. And I watched this one. I wouldn't say it's a debate, but it's a debate between these two candidates, and one of them was clearly uh, adept at online communication, looking at the camera, realizing that you're relating to people in a certain yeah, way. Yeah. And the other one looked like he spent the whole time looking for his keys. He, was, <laughs> he had his head down and he was searching his desk if, the entire time. And, and by the way, he won. Um, but, wow. but, uh, <laughs> but I thought there might be a future in just media consulting for these people. because It's just mm -hmm. not that complicated if you understand what makes the thing succeed. Like you understand in a live conversation, theoretically, something that works for you that makes your conversation succeed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But online, you have to adapt that to certain technologies and such. And uh, yeah, absolutely. It's interesting. Well, I, I, was, I, I, I was joking that, you know, I could do a better job and I'm presenting and producing at the same time. You know, I, it's, it's not just that there's a load of other things that are going on in this show like that, that they've obviously got a cheap daytime show where they've just got one camera and there's two people on the same camera, but they're talking to each other and at the camera and it's just hor The eye line is horrible and it makes you think that they're just completely shifty, which I'm sure they're not, but it's just, <laughs> we're used to this. If I was sort of going, if I'm looking, I mean, you know, I think people are used to it cause I have to look away cause I'm producing, but you know, if there are two people talking and they're having bants and they're trying to present to the cat, it's just, it's a horrible mess and it's really distressing to watch. Uh, anyway, yes, but it's not hard. It, you know, it's not hard to do. <sighs> well, Charles. it is. It is oh. hard to do. That, well, but, but no one puts the effort into making sure they get it right. Because once you get it right, get it going, you, you know, it's it's not hard to maintain. That's true. The hard yeah. part is, is, is sorting it out. I suppose you know, like, I am 674 episodes into my own show, which I should have got yeah. most of it right by now. And it did take me about 600 <laughs> episodes to get anywhere near better. Oh, come but, on. <laughs> but, oh, oh, come on. Great. It's a great show. Uh, well, anyway, right. Okay. I, I just thought we'd throw that out there. Did I, was there a point to that? No, that was you, Rich, wasn't it? Yeah. So I was going to put my rant. Else. That's fine. And that's totally fine. I was going to say, let's have a look at the, uh, let me see if I've got this. I should make sure I'm going to play after calling them out. I should make sure. Yeah, here we go. I pressed the right button. I would have been really embarrassing after I'd been calling them out. This circuit rhythm, <laughs> circuit rhythm is now out. Uh, you can record samples. Uh, it's very much on the same model as the circuit uh, tracks. I think, which is what I released. I think uh, I reviewed recently. I think it's eight tracks of samples, very similar kind of thing. So I think it's designed to be a a, a kind of partner or a, 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 an enhancement to your other uh, desktop stuff. 
And it's out. It's finally there, 359, going to be available mid-July. So, well, it's not out, it's nearly out. Eight more songs with Circuit Style Secrets. I don't know, I mean, this it's really interesting because um, Circuit, I recommend to uh, people who are just starting out because they're all kind of going, I need this, I need that, I need all these other things. And it's like, well, actually, if I was you, I'd spend 300 bucks on something that you could just see if you want to make music this way rather than... I don't know what I'm doing at all if I buy everything and then and then you know learn a load of stuff at least you're just focusing on one thing and you can kind of figure out whether you've got an aptitude for it or whether it's your your thing or whatever I don't know the circuit the circuit um, rhythm uh, looks like it could be kind of fun because uh, having a, just a simple and easy and straightforward way to play uh, drum beats that are you know sample based you know i know we've got dig attacks we've got other things but they're a bit more expensive it's not as e you know without a computer it's not as easy as it might seem yeah what do you think rich have you seen that yeah, have, you, look, have you played look, the circuit look what they've done to my sp 1200 um, well yeah no, that, that, yeah um it looks like a really impressive piece of gear again for the money i think it was 350 bucks or something and uh it does a lot of stuff and appears to make human your interaction with the music that you've created fairly easy to execute uh, based on the videos I've watched. I haven't actually operated one, but uh, given what it is and what it does, and if you like making music on buttons, this is a pretty damn cool thing, if you ask me. Um, I <laughs> thought it looked and sounded pretty neat. It's got the gazintas and the gazoutas. Gazintas again, and, uh, yeah, that's right. It's got plenty of knobs to, to do live, real-time kind of knob manipulation stuff. There's cool things you can do on the buttons about getting things to repeat at various uh, musical intervals or uh, play backwards or do things, you know, abrupt, you know, like life-changing things that you do in playback to make a, an impression. <laughs> yeah. You can do all of that. Um I don't know that much about how it stores things or the operation. Oh, it's SD system. card. Yeah, Mike, it's got micro the interaction. SD. No, I yeah. mean in terms of uh, how how you uh, create songs and the thing. The yeah, it's, it's this it's, yeah, musical it's, structure it's, of it's it. It's the same sequence. So you basically, it's the same. Uh, you get patterns on a track, which you can link together. Uh, you can chain patterns. Then you have, uh, you, you can chain different chains of patterns to create kind of song structure but then you've also That's got I mean, yeah, yeah it, 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 it's it's very much similar to the uh circuit as far as i understand i know mm -hmm. i think it's kind of cool i i would have i mean as it's sample based i would have liked to have seen some more ins and outs because it's only a stereo out and i think you know if because you, you might want to take the kick and the the snare and some and you know two pet two four outputs would probably make it a bit more ah, kind of yeah. thrilling to me i don't know i, I mm -hmm. What do you think, Charles? I mean, one, here's a fact uh, that perhaps you didn't know, um, that mm. the uh, it's stored in sample dump standard. So when you're transferring stuff, it's still using the sam MIDI sample dump standard to kind of get the samples in and out, which is why sometimes doing it over the web MIDI is still a bit slow. But that's just a side, yeah. uh, a side fact. Sorry, hmm. I lost your... Ah. There you are. <laughs> uh, so it doesn't quite hit the sweet spot for me. Um, uh, you know, okay, first thing, it doesn't have a screen. And, oh. I, and I know, oh, you can get away from computers, you don't need a screen. Whatever. So I have, I have, uh, you know, like I have my OP1 and I have an OPZ, which the OPZ has no screen. I have various pieces of kit that don't have screens that do complicated things. And I find that things that don't have any kind of screen whatsoever are things I just don't use. You That's know, an I, interesting I don't, point, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't need a computer screen. I don't need... I don't need everything spelled out for me, but I need I don't need anything to be cryptic because then it becomes very full of friction for me. It becomes, uh, okay, I've got to remember what this button means, even though it doesn't say what it means. Uh, yeah, that I, would, uh, I would concur. And I, I, I just bought a Machina Plus. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Machina Plus. Um, and that has screens on it. And it's a, it's a different way of navigating and so forth. But the fact that it has those screens on it makes it great i love creating charts on it but anything that doesn't that it doesn't it's like, like my my poor opz it just it sounds great it just doesn't get oh, used it's a because, nightmare. And that's uh, that's yeah. the that's the one that's the review that uh, me and gaz did together and gaz was really enthusiastic and i was a really grumpy old man going this is really annoying me because everything is so cryptic and far away from right here yeah. that I, I've, yeah. uh, it just wound me up I, I would agree a little bit actually with this because uh, when I reviewed mm -hmm. the circuit the one thing that you do find is you can't you know you can't remember 
where you stored that project that that has the song idea that you're working because there there is no screen it's like was it on the end of row two or on the end of row three or the end of row four i can't remember so having yeah. just a little thing hmm. so that when you press it it says this one is you know called that yeah. idea you should take a look at you know and and what samples you I, I i totally agree but it does go against the kind of principle but i think it would benefit from just a little small oled just yeah. to sort of give you some text to kind of go oh yeah that's it you know that that's all it means oops is yeah it is it doesn't need form much of control? just something oh. sorry rich i is apologize there... for interrupting is there not some form of computer interaction that is possible or device interaction yes, outside of the is. unit? Yes, there is, but it's web. It's web MIDI, so it's it's not kind of as in, you know you you need your computer. In which case, it's like well, well, I suppose you could no, do I'm it with. I suppose, I don't know whether you could do web MIDI on uh, phones and stuff. It has to be Chrome, so I'm not sure it would work that way. I'd have to look into that. But mm. it's not you know. It, yes, I take okay. your point, but no, the answer is not as far as I'm aware straight away. But uh, it's out there in the world. I think a lot of people do dig. There, there's a really good um, uh, series of podcasts that Novations do, and I think it's Ricky Tinez and a few other guys, and they basically just kind of make a sound pack for the, the circuit, which I guess you could do the same thing with the rhythm, and they all just go, okay, I'm going to make a beat with these, and they all take through. And the stuff that they come up with is just mind-blowing. It's like, wow, you know, limited kind of stuff but it's yeah sometimes it, i think you need to be in the groove and i take your point charles that uh sometimes y you're not and you can't be bothered to be because you just yeah. need to do it right now yeah, yeah. but yeah. okay yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to have to it's fine that i i might have to learn a different you know flow of of working but i don't want to have to not only learn a new language but to learn the lettering behind it and learn <laughs> you know like yeah. all the yeah, you know, the, the nuance, thought, yeah. like I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't have, I, I need to, I need to write music. I don't have time to learn yeah. completely new things. Where the it's maximum effort for minimal gain. You know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I well, just, that's a fair I point. I, I think that's a fair point. That's a fair point. Well, uh, here's uh, here's something which is uh, which is not. Isotope Producers Club is a one of a kind membership for producers ready to take their tracks to the next level. Once you join, you'll gain access to powerhouse Isotope plugins and a curated selection of tools from our partners, such as Melodyne from Celimony. Plus, as long as you're a member, you'll get every future update to the Isotope plugins in your membership for no extra cost. We'll also regularly serve you new curated content like exclusive inspiration sparking sample packs and preset packs and industry leading training ranging from our own tutorials to vocal production lessons from the world-renowned Berkeley Online, taught by Grammy-winning producer and engineer, Prince Charles Alexander. With new content being added every month full of valuable production techniques, tips and tricks, and solutions to common production problems, becoming a member is an investment in your career that grows as you and your career do. For more information on Isotope Producers Club, head to isotope.com. Yeah, and uh, there's Producers Club, there's Music Production Suite Pro, there's different flavours of that, depending on uh, how you want to uh, buy into it. But also, uh, if you want to save yourself a quick 10%, uh, they use the code SONIC10 over at isotope.com forward slash SONIC TALK. I think that should work. Yes, there we go. And uh, including the for 49 bucks, you can get 11 plugins as part of the communicate, community appreciation button, which I think is going. So it, it applies a lot. A, a lot so thank you very much isotope for being so generous um i was going to put now let me just see what i was going to go in with next because i th i think th i i'm going to go with oh, this rich, one because question. oh sorry rich um i just wanted to say isotope on the subject of isotope and this is probably not going to apply to the sonic discount i could be wrong are offering the nimbus exponential nimbus reverb for 15 dollars i right got now. that yeah Ooh. i saw that you posted yeah. And it's an awesome reverb. And I'm sure it means they're coming out with a new one, you know, or they've already, they already have come out with a new one, which has got their AI uh, assistant features in it and such. But this is a magnificent piece of software and for 15 bucks, it's a steal. So um, I wanted to call I, I bought it. Actually, I haven't tried it yet, but I saw your post on uh, uh, um, social it's media. Awesome. I'm just looking to see. It was via Plugin Boutique, I believe. Yeah. Just try but I think find... they may have it on their website as well. Ah, okay. Well, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? If you could get that, wow! Save save ten percent on save ten percent on fifteen I don't know bucks. If you're going to be 
save the, the dollar fifty on your fifteen dollar reverb. I don't but still, know, but yeah, I haven't tried it out, but I'm looking forward like to uh, checking it. It's, it's yeah, it's supposed to be pretty damn fine. Um, anyway, let's have a look at this one then. This is kind of interesting. So this is um, it's called Push Hacker Two, and it's a uh, Max Hi, for Live. Welcome to this tutorial. Well, I'll let him fast lane digital audio school done in Montpellier, France, an Ableton certified training center. Today I'm really proud to introduce to you the Push Hacker 2. This Max for Life device is the result of the collaboration between sound manufacturer and Fast Lane. Push Hacker 2 has been recorded from the ground up to make it more powerful and more flexible than ever. Push Hacker 2 enables you to assign or reassign any feature on the push whilst in note or session mode. So now uh, it's a quite a long video, but it's very uh, and what th this is something that I'm really interested in because push integration with live is great. You know it works really well, but there are often times when you just think, I just can I just I want a button to do this, and what push hacker do does at a very you know at a sort of skim level of uh, of, of detail because there's a lot more to it than that is allow you to script and assign all kinds of stuff to to to. to you know, to, to buttons and knobs and uh, pressure and, you know, so you can create this entirely customised surface on top of what Push already does. Uh, and, what, and, you know, just a couple of features. One of them is, you know, normally if you've got a big session, you have to use the you know the the arrow buttons to move the red box around this one you can you can program buttons so you can just go okay jump to a very specific point in the arrangement and then all my clips will be there that kind of stuff when you're playing live is really amazing this thing is it's like 16 bucks i mean i can't yeah. believe that really and it, it feels like it's the editor for push that the ableton kind of probably wish they'd made uh, because Max for Live now as we know is now since 10 is baked in so the efficiency and all of that you don't need to worry about the overhead it's astonishing I, Charles I know you're a push user and I have am. you checked this out yeah. I mean this looks like a, you know must have I'm gonna I'm gonna get it I think I'm definitely gonna get it yeah I'm definitely gonna get it because I've run into exactly that where there are certain things that it's just like oh, why do, why did they just have just you know this button to do that and you know who you know who could really use it is Robbie because uh, he he's having to navigate the push quite a bit for during shows because he uses the push to control a lot of the playback stuff. Right. And uh, I'm not giving away any secrets, by the way. <laughs> so, but that's that. It, there is a bit of playback stuff, and because Howard likes to change uh, the arrangements of songs while he's on stage, you know, just feeding off the audience and so forth. Um, so Robbie's constantly navigating these huge sessions, and. Uh, I think this would be something really useful for him, but but for me, yeah, I mean, it's so cheap. I'm definitely gonna gonna get it. I just haven't had a chance to get download it yet. But I did watch the video uh, about it yesterday. And yeah, I mean, this, this exactly does look, it does use. look really good. Uh, this came via uh, yeah. Peter Kern's CDM music, which uh, just give him a shout out for that. Uh, CDM.link is well worth checking out. But yeah, so it's a Max for Live plugin. Just download it. I mean, it's, you know, the, the features, map yeah. buttons and dials to any parameters <coughs> with scaling. That's something that's really interesting to me because there are certain things that you, it's like on our uh, on our devices, we've, we've done, you know, our freeze machines. Yeah, you know, there's a, we had to assign freeze on or off to a knob. And it's like really annoying because you can't just, I want a button that just goes freeze yeah. on, freeze off. I don't want to have to turn it or worry about, you know, how, how or, or figure out where it in the, you know, and we'd be able to do all of that stuff. And it's like, yes, I mean, this should, this should be happening. Uh, Rich, I don't know if yeah. you've, have you, have you played put with push and, and live? It's a great integration. I mean, really, even though know, it's kind of getting pretty long in the tooth, it's still got legs, I think. Yes, it's beautiful. And I was actually introduced to it in the Ableton office in Berlin on tour one year, some years back when they were first introducing it. And I was really, really impressed. And this software is awesome because not only can you do and assign individual activities, but you can macro things up and with different response curves. I mean, you can, you can control like up to four or eight things, depending on what you're trying to do from one single action and have it affect different things in different ways. So your filter cutoff is following one curve while your LFO is following some other curve. And you can actually have it do all kinds of cool mapped things uh, simultaneously. Yeah. I was really impressed. I would, yeah. I would certainly, if I had a push, I would definitely spring the 16 bucks 
to get one. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's really interesting, isn't it? I mean, there's some amazing... Now that Max for Live is kind of part of the core code of the of the, inst- of the software, there are some amazing things. I mean, I've been watching... I was just on CDM when I was looking at this, and I thought, oh, this is interesting. There was another story there, which was something else, which was just like this massive mod matrix that allowed you to interface with uh, the CV tools. And it's just like, oh, this is really starting. I mean, it's kind of like what Bitwig have done with their, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the the, the thing, but uh, obviously it's integrated into live, so it's a it's a thing. I just just the extensibility is astonishing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's it's mm-hmm. going to be great. So sixteen dollars, I'm going to buy it. I just haven't had a chance. That's do, all. Do, <laughs> does does Robbie or any of the crew use any kind of Max for Live and extens uh, any extens extension stuff, or do they keep it kind of simple for for live work? It's pretty simple because uh, Ro- Ro- Robbie's mostly a logic user right um and there have been times when uh, so the whole show's done up in ableton because of the flexibility with clips and so, i mean you could oh, do that with logic yeah. now i guess but um but uh if he gets stuck on something for live most of the time i'm actually up there uh sorting sorting out because I'm, I'm a big live user uh but uh but he's he's definitely getting into it further so i i, I don't remember if he has the sweet version sweet with su not sw uh the the sweet version on his laptop or not it's a sweet version um i think uh i think i think he does have the full version anyway whatever but uh but yeah this this would be this would justify it just you know this as cheap as this plugin is it would justify getting a version that has max built into it yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's a couple of people in the chat room were saying uh, actually you should check out the, uh, I can't remember if it was YouTube or whether it's gone past. Sorry, it, 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 it flowed past. But uh, Akai Force is also the OS there is starting to really come to life now. They're really, and that that's another interesting device. That looks really, it's kind of gone under the radar because I've been pushing the MPC platform so much. But Force is also a really cool, you know, like start to finish production machine, standalone production machine. It really does look like something worth checking out uh, because it's got a bit more control and it's just not, it's not just a straight MPC thing. It's like a cross between push and live. It's, it's almost like hardware live in a way, you know, but obviously, you know, trademarks and all of that kind of business. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, if you're looking for that kind of stuff. Um, okay, uh, I think I posted the link to that. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, I did the circuit rhythm. Uh, push. Uh, oh, yeah, here we go. This is a new concept synth. This is interesting. This is uh, Heiner Kroon, who does loads of uh, sort of synth overlays, add-on synth overlays. He's kind of come up with, I think it's a he. I do beg your pardon. The Positron 16 synth is a concept. It's obviously got some really good uh, 3D uh, 3D graphics chops. This is the, It seems to me that this is a 16 voice synth that's loosely based, or maybe heavily based, on the the Behringer Neutron uh, voice, because it's got uh, morphing 3340 oscillators. It's got a pair of filters, one of which is the Moffat, which is on the Neutron, which I think is, I mean, for the record, is a fantastic synthesizer. Uh, yeah, 333 with the same kind of vibe, so it looks like they're going for the same end. And I think what, what they're trying to do is get a lot of interest so that uh, Behringer will make this for them. And uh, it seems like all this effort's gone into the concept of the synth. I know we can't really sort of say either way, but it, it just... What I found really interesting about this is it's kind of... It's almost like trying to get a synth made is... It, it, it's like old school kind of sending your demo in for uh, to get your album signed. You know, it's like, make my make my synth. Because <laughs> like, he sent me... An, they sent me an email saying, oh, it'd be great if you could mention it because we're trying to get a, a momentum behind it. And, you know, there is some interest from, from Behringer. But... I think one thing that I was looking at, it's like, yeah, I mean, it's like, hey, you know, we've got the synth neutron voice, we've got all of these other things, all we have to do is put it in a box with 16, make it 16 voice. It's like, yes, but making a 16 voice analog polysynth is not that simple. Ask Moog, you know, they, they know how difficult it is, and they still struggle with their calibration, although I'm sure it's a lot better than it was when I reviewed it. But, you know, it's not an easy thing to do and get right. And 16 voice, so that's 30, 32 oscillators, that's going to be... I, I don't know that that's necessarily that straightforward, but it's an interesting idea. I mean, just the, wouldn't it be great if we could all just come up with a synth idea, Rich, and just send it in and have someone say, yeah, OK, I'll make it. What the hell? I mean, <laughs> if we had one. Well, the this. tendency is apparently to dump every single desirable feature you've ever considered fun about anything else you've ever used <laughs> into <laughs> the instrument that you're designing. 
and make make one thing that you know one ring to rule them all kind of thing and um and i understand the temptation and one of my dearest friend one of our dearest friends uh created a concept that was very much like that and based around a cs80 uh that he wanted to do but uh it this looks like uh, first of all why behringer but not why not behringer but why behringer and uh i wish ty were here at the moment uh and, <laughs> oh, i'm kind of glad he is um, in a way i take your point but but if you know what i mean why behringer um it could have been you know uh, you know, uh, Walt, you know, uh, Walt, the guys who make it, Waldorf or, you know, what it yeah. could have been anybody. But uh, I don't know. Do people actually get, do you really want to give this design? I mean, are you trying to get a job as a synth designer? Typically, you have to embrace certain fundamentals within a device design that may not include every single thing you've ever used that was fun. Like, it doesn't have yeah. to be all things for all people all the time. Um, and if you can come up with one innovative feature, that's generally cool. And the one they seem to have uh, grokked from Arturia's Polybrute is the uh, the morph knob, which allows you to apparently morph between yeah. two layers of synths and have all the parameters morphing independently their values and giving you all these wonderful sweet spots in between the two things you thought were cool. And yeah. that, that's one thing Very that they different obviously... Yeah. Implemented. I think they call it duo or duet or something. They didn't, and it's funny because they have a morph feature that does something else. But um, it was interesting. It was fun. Yeah, sure. Yeah, give me all that. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, that, Joel Charles. It does look like re he's really going for the gig at Behringer because right here, there's also the sort of Deep Mind Twelve mod matrix and everything. So that's what looks like it's happening to me. I feel like I've been unwittingly uh, drafted in to help someone <laughs> in their job interview. Now I'm looking <laughs> at it in more get detail. A, but get a job for Behringer. But, it's, but wouldn't it's it be nice? Like... Wouldn't it be nice if if it could be made? Yes, but uh, it, uh, what's a, it is? It's a little bit like he's like someone going, "Okay, guys." I got an idea. I want to cure cancer. I, you doctors, you figure it all out. I'm just an ideas guy. <laughs> you figure it out. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, he's got all these ideas for what would be a, a dream synth, but you know, execution is going to be a, a pretty tough one. Yeah. Um, I guess you know, Behringer would be a good choice in the sense that they have a, a I guess, partly from economy of scale and. Um, well, and all the and individual elements are basically Behringer features, like the 3340 yeah. oscillators, the Moffat filter, the mod matrix, yeah. you know, some kind of... I just don't I don't picture this keyboard being as small as the 3D rendering. I, I, I picture it being being bigger, bigger and I and, oh, okay. and heavier and <laughs> I picture it being almost the size of this console and it takes six guys to lift this thing. Um, yeah, I see So, I yeah, I, 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 you know... Uh, it's a great it's a great thing to dream about but it it feels a little bit like and no i'm not referring to the music it feels a little bit like vaporware you know like um something that someone's got a great idea and then three years later you're like oh what if, what if they ever made that no i guess not you know that's kind of what it seems like to me well you couldn't you could the, uh, he's got a pretty straightforward poll would you like the positron 16 to become real yes or no that's kind of it uh what about yes but or no, because um, that, that yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't mean to you know rain on his parade at all, but I think I, I think the engineering challenges for making something with that many analog voices is going to be way way tougher than you know. It, it should just be a question of putting yeah. a bunch of these in a box, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be. Hard. I'm sure I'm sure he knows how hard or he or she knows how hard it's going to be, but. Yeah, I quite, I quite like the design though. In terms of you know just you know UI uh, making a design, I think that's actually it's kind of I quite like that. I, I think they've mm. got a bit of a flair for it. It's, it's just it's quite crowded, but uh, hey, sixteen voice polyphonic Behringer, uh, very uh, neutron voice. Because I did I, when when they when that came out, I was like, wow, I think that's what should happen next. You know, make a polyphonic neutron. You know, a, a deep mind yeah. with neutron oscillators would be pretty amazing although I, again you know i'm not sure th those oscillators are so massive i'm not sure how good they would be how, how nicely they play together they would just be it might be just mud you know because they're so big i don't know yeah but 
Hey, anyway, so, I thought I'd yeah, throw it in there. <laughs> I, prom- I promised I'd talk about it, and I did talk about it. I, I, and now I feel like I've I've done my bit to, for your job. So, don't uh, don't um, what's the name of you know headhunters? Don't they get a percentage of the final salary for a while? Maybe I yeah, do. absolutely. <laughs> Mind Please. you, I don't know anything about that. Get, let, let get him that job. That. Yeah, give him that job, and then he might send me a T-shirt or something, or maybe even Actually, a Wilson. super sticker in the chat room. How very kind of you, uh, Audio Eng. Uh, I think we've got. All right. Uh, let's see, is it working? Uh, no, super chat is not coming up. That's really annoying me. It works one week and doesn't work another one. But thank you very much. That's going towards the when we can all finally get together. We're going to have a party fund, whatever that is. Yes. I don't know what would that be as an acronym. I'm just trying to when we can. W, no, it's too many letters. I can't even make yeah. track of it. But I think we're. I think we're there. I think we've kind of. Uh, I think we've covered pretty much everything, which is astonishing. Because uh, well, it's not astonishing because it's summer, and usually there's hardly any news in the summer. But we have news, and there was some news. Uh, Rich, thank you so much for joining us. Have you got stuff happening? What's happening? Are you, are you kind of getting ready to get out on the road? Are you, are you, a sheik, going to do it? Do you, do you think they're going to, going to be able to make it work? Well, that's more up to you guys, yeah. so to speak, yeah, than it is up so. to me. Um, but uh, we just did, last week, we performed for a Juneteenth uh, celebration uh, run by Rob, called the Juneteenth Unity Celebration Foundation, run by Robert Randolph, uh, excellent guitarist who joined us uh, in our performance. We performed four songs for this thing live together oh, wow. in an actual venue. Uh, for the first time in 16 months, uh, was all of us playing mm-hmm. together, and uh, it was it was awesome. It was fantastic. It felt so good. I and, imagine. Uh, have you been able to get that kind of endorphin? And, well, I, I, without a two, I don't want to ask anything too personal because that's you know it, those endorphins <laughs> are, are that's something that you only get when you play live in a bunch of room together. Well, there are other ways to get it, but you know, I'm just thinking. Of, I mean, you must have missed that. Was it a good buzz? Of course. <laughs> of course. Everything, the social aspects, the musical aspects, the character aspects, everything is, it was great. It was just so much fun and we can't wait to, uh, to do some more gigging. Uh, there is, uh, there are odd rehearsals and private gigs that we may do between now and August. And hopefully if, uh, your side of the ocean gets their uh, vaccination schedules together. Uh, we'll be back over there in uh, second half of August and second half of September. And that's brilliant, really. Uh, that's the plan, and that's just down to whether or not the uh, social restrictions are lifted in time to make that happen. Yeah, well, I guess I hope so. I mean, you know, we just don't know which what direction it's going in. But uh, Charles, I guess uh, you're well, you're you're doing your marking when does that finish and then i guess pe- perhaps it'll be some uh, some business to, to to get on the road well, the, with the marking marking finished yesterday um and we're howard howard rehearsals are completely done i think we're going to do a couple of live streams maybe but um the otherwise all i'm i'm working on uh two game soundtracks they have like about a thousand cues each. Wow. I think one has like uh, nine hundred, another one's got like twelve hundred. So geez. somewhere around a thousand. <laughs> Busy then. And then, yeah, a lot of music, and uh, and I'm doing a couple of remixes and you know that kind of stuff. And oh, oh, and I got oh, I just remembered I have an album that's coming in that I mix. So I've got work to you know that will keep me nicely busy in the summer. It'd just be nice to be able to go and do shows on the weekends too. Uh, yeah, we'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, hopefully all of this stuff will will come back together soon. Uh, I think uh, looking forward to maybe having a bit of life outside this room and my front room for, you know, a, a little bit yeah. of time. That would be nice, but uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll get out and go fishing yeah. and stuff. I uh, just wanted to plug one thing quickly. I did spot Midiera in the chat room. Uh, check out his, uh, he's done a, an interview with uh, Norman Cook, aka Flatboy, Fatboy, Flatboy, Fatboy Slim. Very, because uh, they both live in Brighton and I think they just bumped into him and managed to snaffle an interview. So well done, uh, Midiera. Um, do check that out. It's kind of an interesting, an interesting read or going back. Uh, just, I didn't know anything about um, Norman Cook and now I know a lot more about him very very good stuff so i'll put mm-hmm. the link in the show notes so guys uh, thank you so much for joining us it's been a pleasure as ever um and if you haven't already go and buy the album the sonic 01 yes. is out now look that's the that's that there's an ad all over the site 
just go there and click on that and that'll take you to it and then uh, go and buy it we've we've still got so much more to go we we pressed up so many and we've still got some to sell you know so <laughs> digitally <laughs> <laughs> but guys thank you, so much thank data. you yeah thank you so much and thank you for, again for you guys for your contributions uh both to the show and to the album it's been a really good fun so we'll see you all next time that is sonic talk uh episode gosh what is it episode 674 Six, 674 yeah. there we go we'll see you next time thanks very much for watching take care now bye bye <laughs>